Good morning, friends and colleagues from around the world. I'm Doug Brown, founder of Black Book Research. Over the next 20 minutes, you'll learn three things. First, where open EHR adoption will genuinely expand in 2025 and 2026. Second, which barriers most often derail progress and how to anticipate them. And third, how governments, vendors, and health systems can position themselves for real value, not just compliance. You can download both this full presentation deck and the Black Book Open EHR Growth Forecast Report from our website at blackbookmarketresearch.com. Today, my job is to separate signal from noise, and right now, the signal is strong. For decades, we've built health IT like castles, walls around vendors, silos around applications. But the center of gravity is shifting, the data itself. In this new world, Open EHR is no longer just interesting. It's a credible operating model for clinical data. Today's keynote draws on the newest black book research and forward-looking analysis. We'll explore where open EHR takes root, where it stalls, and where transformative opportunities lie. This new report is the foundation for everything that follows. Three global forces are converging. Policy, from TEFCA in the US to the European health data space, Interoperability mandates are here. Cost. Global EHR budgets keep climbing while innovation slows. Decoupling data from applications reduces lock-in and frees resources for frontline innovation. Data science. AI doesn't run on PDFs or fax images. It needs structured, computable, reusable data. That's exactly what open EHR archetypes provide. These are tailwinds, not wishful thinking. They turn interoperability from a buzzword into an operational advantage. Two more realities define the moment. National playbooks. Finland's Kanta, the UK's NHS trust deployments, and Slovenia's national programs prove open standards scale. These initiatives strengthen digital sovereignty. Nations want control of their data futures. Workforce and ecosystem. Across regions, new IT graduates, clinicians, and developers are being trained in open standards. Vendors like Better, Cambio, Mirand, and Code24 show that open EHR can thrive commercially. The warning is clear. Wait too long, and we risk another decade of expensive lock-in, just as policy, AI, and talent align toward openness. Timing matters. Momentum is a perishable asset. Our 2025 survey reached 760 professionals across 30 countries covering more than 100 EHR and interoperability products. Two strongest adoption signals stood out. Alignment with national policy. Aggressive AI roadmaps. Where those coexist, interest in open EHR spikes sharply. This is an anecdote. It's statistically consistent across every region we measured. Behind each percentage is a hospital deciding whether to buy another monolith or to invest in open data. Health IT bends toward regulatory gravity. Finland's nationwide spine processes 6 billion structured transactions each year. In the UK, multiple NHS trusts are piloting open EHR modules. Estonia has embedded open EHR inside its digital society. And in Brazil, procurement language now specifies open formats. When policy is explicit, Procurement follows and vendors pivot. Without policy clarity, adoption stalls. Follow the policy and you'll follow the money. Policy doesn't just signal intent, it shapes market behavior. Two camps are emerging. Camp A, embracing modular, open, EHR-based architectures. Examples such as Better, Cambio, Mirand, Code24. Camp B is in a mode of Painted door compliance, surface-level APIs but closed cores. Procurement teams now see the difference. In a recent UK tender, open EHR vendors scored 30% higher on interoperability criteria than their legacy competitors. 57% of officials in our survey say they now score RFPs on genuine openness, not just checkbox compliance. The distinction is visible now in tender scoring, and it's reshaping vendor strategy. AI multiplies value only when data is computable. Hospitals using summarization, predictive analytics, and decision support 
Lean toward OpenEHR because archetypes embed semantics into the data. Let's take a real example. An oncology network in Scandinavia built AI risk scores for recurrence using OpenEHR data models. Accuracy rose by 22% compared with legacy datasets. Proprietary silos produce brittle AI. They are built on sand. With OpenEHR, clinical meaning travels with the data. 61% of CIOs say AI readiness is their top argument for adopting OpenEHR. This is the unlock for trustworthy AI. Adoption is not uniform. It accelerates where policy, funding, and local champions converge. Our data points to seven hot zones we'll explore. Let's start in Northern and Western Europe. The European health data space is real. In our survey of 184 EU hospital CIOs, 62% expect to overhaul data platforms by 2027. As mentioned previously, Finland's Contaspine handles 6 billion structured transactions a year. The Netherlands has 11 of 16 university hospitals piloting archetypes. In a new case, Norway's regional network used Open EHR to share longitudinal records across oncology and cardiology centers, cutting integration costs by 40%. Europe is the testbed for scaling openness, and the world is watching. Estonia leads. 94% of citizens have digital records. 99% of prescriptions are electronic. Our Black Book survey of 54 Baltic executives found 71% cite digital sovereignty as their top driver. Lithuania and Latvia are preparing tenders referencing open EHR, and EU funding, 1.2 billion euros, supports digital health through 2027. These countries aren't just catching up, they're building resilience. Here, sovereignty is as important as technology. Brazil's Ministry of Health now requires open formats in procurement. 58% of Brazilian respondents plan to include open EHR in their next tender. Mexico's IMSS, serving 70 million citizens, is testing federated models. Colombia has budgeted $250 million for interoperability pilots. Add Chile's telehealth network and Uruguay's public EHR initiative, and you see a continent linking systems through federation not monoliths. Latin America is building digital federations for the next generation. In the Middle East, Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 includes $4.3 billion for digital health. 64% of executives we surveyed say open data standards are under evaluation. The UAE's Malafi project is exploring archetypes to unify systems across emirates. Asia Pacific is a leapfrog region. India's Ayushman Bharat digital mission has issued over 14 million digital IDs. 44% of Indian state CIOs rank Open EHR as a top three longitudinal data model. Singapore and Malaysia are piloting archetypes for chronic and maternal health. Australia's research networks are now training students on Open EHR tooling. These regions are avoiding legacy pain by going modular first. In the US, incumbents still dominate but TEFCA cracks are opening. 42% of CIOs plan to deploy middleware or modular data platforms by 2027. Canada's federal initiative is budgeting nearly 1 billion Canadian dollars. 57% of respondents say EU alignment influences their procurement. And in Africa, donor-funded pilots are accelerating. Kenya, South Africa, and Ghana are running open EHR proofs of concept. Nigeria's university hospitals are experimenting with FHIR bridges to open EHR repositories. Middleware in the U.S., blank slate builds in Africa. The contrasts teach us that context matters more than technology choice. By 2027, the analyzed Black Book survey responses offer these predictions. Europe leads adoption under the EHDS. Latin America scales federations with successful outcomes. The Middle East and Asia-Pacific leapfrog from their 2025 positions. North America advances via middleware, and Africa builds open from scratch. Globally, 53% of executives now place open EHR on their strategic planning horizon, up from 28% just two years ago. What does this mean for procurement? It means a shift toward outcome-based buying. Governments increasingly bundle AI and analytics objectives into open data contracts. The momentum is uneven, but unmistakable. 
Four blockers stand out from the Black Book surveys. Legacy lock-in. It is very expensive to replace current systems. Skills gap. We need more archetype literate clinicians and engineers. Standards fragmentation. Open EHR must coexist with HL7, FHIR, and national frameworks. Vendor resistance and political cycles. Short-term politics versus long-term systems. Complicate adoption processes. 47% of executives cite the skills shortage as their top barrier. That's why universities in Estonia, Brazil, and Australia are launching open standards clinician curricula. These aren't fatal. They just require planning and sustained investment. The steps to moving forward speak directives to all stakeholders. Governments should embed semantic interoperability in tenders and fund de-risking pilots. Vendors must move beyond lock-in and focus on analytics and services on open data. Providers can start with sidecars, oncology, labs, medications, prove ROI, then scale. Academia and standards bodies must lower tooling costs and publish ROI case studies. From our survey, 61% of executives say pilots under $5 million are the sweet spot for proving value. If you're designing one now, remember six principles. Clear use case, strong clinical champion, measurable outcome, open data export, public reporting, and a training plan. Incremental wins build trust, political and clinical. Opportunities abound. Europe's EHDS rollout, Latin America's federations, APAC's leapfrog, Africa's donor pilots, and the Middle East's national strategies. Innovations such as AI, predictive analytics, and digital twins will thrive only on structured open EHR data. Take one example. A university in Singapore built a digital twin for heart failure patients using open EHR repositories, cutting simulation time by half. Across regions, 68% of leaders now describe open EHR as operational infrastructure, not a research experiment. Treat data like infrastructure, roads, ports, and electricity, not as attachments. To wrap up today's presentation, I can affirm that the future of healthcare data cannot remain locked in proprietary vaults. By 2027, open EHR is the credible path to resilience, innovation, and cross-border trust. The debate is no longer if adoption happens, it's how fast and where first. Again. I'm Doug Brown of Black Book Research, and as a reminder, you can download today's slides and the comprehensive 2025 Open EHR Growth Forecast Report at no fee at blackbookmarketresearch.com. Let's build this next generation of healthcare data together. Thank you.